Hey guys, welcome to the Evan and Caitlin podcast, the podcast that Caitlin's doing the intro for today. Yay! Good intro. Myself. Um, so today we are going to talk about jobs we had when we were teenagers slash maybe early 20 somethings. Did yeah. yours bleed into that? Mine did a little bit. Uh, I worked. I'm not good with ages. You know how bad I am. So Was I worked it in college or in high school. I worked in high school. And then I, the first summer after college, I okay. worked a normal job and then I went to internships. Okay, cool, cool. So, so we thought it'd be fun to talk about like our, our old jobs. I know we've talked about like our corporate post college type jobs before, but we were streaming the other day and we have this thing where if people gift subs to other people, then the rule is like anyone who receives a gifted sub has to do a good deed. Hmm. And we were like, what would good deeds be? And one of the suggestions was like, be nice to someone in retail. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> that made us think of how our both we both have had retail jobs. Yeah, so that that made us think of like our we we chit chatted a little bit about our retail jobs, and then we we're like, you know, what? we should say we should save this. Yeah. we should do a podcast on this because it'd be funny to tell stories. People have been wanting to hear Caitlin's hot topic stories for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the stream, I don't know if people at, in the podcast know that I worked at Hot Topic. Oh wow! Anyway, Today it all comes out. It all comes out. <laughs> but first. A few what new things. So a, what, few, a few what new things. And now a, the a segment called things? What New. <laughs> <laughs> Words are hard. Words are indeed hard, Caitlin. <laughs> so one of the things that have been melting our minds and making our words even harder. Oh, that's the wrong. Moving on um, is all of the tax stuff we've been dealing with. <sighs> oh. You know what? Our, our tax stuff has become so complicated. We even hired an accountant. Someone to help us. Yeah, for the first time, we hired an accountant. And like... But so much still is on you, even with an accountant. It's so not like much. you can just say, like, say like hey, just, just do it. Just do all the things. They need information from you. You need to organize your books. You still need to make everything. You know, I think that's why I resisted. Well, also because I'm cheap and I don't want to pay anybody. <laughs> but I think that's why I resisted and I, like getting an accountant for mm -hmm. so long. Because I was like, we're still going to have to do like 99% of the work. But isn't it so great like, having an expert? It does. And I can be like, um, if I do this, is it illegal or is it legal? And she's like, that's illegal. I'm like, thanks okay. for telling me. <laughs> but they're, 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 it's so, it, it's crazy learning all of this that we've learned. And we certainly don't want to give out tax advice because it no, depends no, no. from state to state. It, like, it, uh, uh, I could just give so many caveats of why we can't give. So we will not have a tax, tax. advice podcast. But it's so easy to break the law. And like the way the systems are set up, it, it's like there's so much responsibility on you, the individual, for something that's so important, and the punishments are so <laughs> high and it's so complicated, you know? Yeah, but but also the rules change the rules all change the, all the time. time. Like, like not not just year to year, like multiple times throughout the year. Yeah, like like just last year, at the end of last year, there's this thing called the Wayfair. <laughs> case yeah so wait you guys know wayfair it's like this um online, online furniture yeah. decoration kind of place um and the way it works when you sell stuff online is it used to be like you only have to charge and remit sales tax for states you have a nexus in which is like a big enough presence in and there was some case against wayfair that was one where now it's like it doesn't matter if you have nexus or not if you make a certain amount of money on any state you have to pay that state's taxes. So instead of just like, for example, let's say you sell stuff online and you live in Texas. Let's say you sell stuff on Etsy and you live in Texas. You'd only have a nexus in Texas. That's nexus how it used to be. That's how it used to be. Now it's like, if you sell over a certain amount, and granted, you'd have to be a pretty big business because it's yeah. pretty high thresholds. But if you sell over a certain amount, you got to register your business in every single state. Yeah, yeah. And like that just happened a few months ago. And no one knows how to do it yeah. yet, you know? But also it's some states, if you sell any product, there are no thresholds. If you sell any oh, yeah. sale in that state, and you every, need to collect st state sales tax and remit it to that state. Even if you sell like five bucks. So like don't sell stuff in Kansas, anybody. <laughs> I, I, like, I think it's know? Kansas and I think I'm not sure all the rules. Check your own. Get, yeah. get legal counsel. Disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. But like I think it's just crazy. But but also it's, it's like these, it's so much. It's like with with the web, it's great. 
the web. <laughs> with, with the internet. <laughs> it, it, it has enabled On so many people web. to do so many things. But like when you used to just have a physical store, everything was pretty understood. Easy. But now you can just open a Shopify website, start collecting taxes, or s- s- not collect taxes, both of which could be wrong, mm-hmm. <laughs> and just start selling stuff. And then you can get sued. Yeah. If you don't do it right. <laughs> yeah. Like the government can come after you for accidentally. And it just seems like there's a wrong. lot of conflicting information. Anyways, all of that to say. Our brains been, have been melting. The we've been dealing with a lot of tax weeks. stuff. We're really yeah. trying to actually simplify it now. We're moving to a new merch system. I'm not sure when we're going to announce that or when that's going to be done or what have you. But if you've been to shopevanandkaylin.com recently, you might notice different. that it's different. Under construction, yeah. But all of that's for tax reasons. So we're, we're really trying to set ourselves up so that this isn't as big of a thing constantly mm-hmm. and at the end of the year. So we can yeah. just make, we just want to make videos and <laughs> we just want to make videos. We just want to make podcasts. We just want to play Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> just, can we just do our things and not get uh, thrown in jail, please? <laughs> yeah, please. Like, like we we're, we're not trying to do things wrong. It's just very complicated. Yeah. Also, but, I've been kind of on a quest. I've been on a quest to upgrade all of our things. As you guys might have noticed, specifically audio things. Well, but like you know, like for for the whole journey uh, of our channel, you know, oh, it's yeah. like it's like recently we got our cameras upgraded. That was probably what three months ago. No, that was like over six months ago. Oh my gosh! <clears throat> yeah, time it's, moves it's January fast. of twenty twenty. <laughs> so. It took me a long time to get to the second step, which is audio. <laughs> you do so, a lot of little things in between with like little, the streaming yeah, yeah, setup. The streaming setup. Oh, by the way, guys. Oh, oh my gosh. We have these amazing keyboards. The people. Here, you can go ahead and disconnect that. The people looking at the YouTube videos. Look at our matching keyboards. These are new little gaming oh, keyboards. Gosh, they're, they're so, so cute. They're so we cute. got little ones, so they don't take they're up They're mechanical. So much space. We've replaced some of the keys. So Caitlin's is unique and mine is unique and they have personality. Mine is purple and Evan's is orange because yeah. those are the two <clears throat> default colors that came with so it. So then when we're playing like Astrony or maybe in the future Minecraft Java or whatever we're doing here, like we're, we're, we're slowly getting things more and more set up. So one thing I recently tackled was um, improving our audio for our main channel videos, which has been mm-hmm. a thing that's bothering us ever since we started the channel. Listening to our old videos. Oh, it's painful. It's so painful. The audio is so bad. We've been improving for a while, but now I think this is probably the biggest step forward in our audio because we spent yeah. a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah. So it, you you um, it, it the videos that are out at the time of this podcast coming out, mm. none of them have the new audio yet. It won't be till after. Um, but I'm really excited to film our first I video. I think the, the very video. first one might have to do with a plant wall or a, a grass wall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So see, uh, let's see if you <laughs> notice. The, the, yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it improves partway through that video. We did the intro yeah. with the old mics, yeah. and like uh, it was so rage-inducing. The mics were really acting up that day, yeah. and we just like we just pulled the trigger on like the expensive purchase right then. We're like, nope, <laughs> we yep. just cannot deal with this anymore. And uh, so finally got the new ones. Yeah. So those are those are some things. Oh, I have a funny story. <laughs> What's that? Well, you know it, but you guys don't know it. Um, but so, like, Jube, usually at night, she'll sleep next to me. And that's, like, her typical spot. Occasionally, she'll be on the couch or whatever. No, I know it's where you're going to tell. It's, it's pretty rare that she's not snuggled next to me. And then there's... And, and she also, like, she sleeps all the way through the night. Like, she's not off playing and stuff. Like, she's a really hard sleeper. And... um she also does tend to wake me up in the morning. It's called the kitty alarm, but she's very polite and she doesn't really start doing it until like eight thirty or nine. And, um, so anyways, the other day, like we were sleeping and we hear this scratching noise. And she does that when she wants to get into a room that has a closed door. The so scratching. We, we look so around. We're looking around and we're like, what? Like, did we, do we accidentally like close the office? And she was in the office overnight. Like, is she, where is she? And we're looking around, we're looking like in the bathroom and the rooms next door in the hallway. And then I was like, wait. And I open Evan's drawer and she is in the drawer. She spent like, like the my night. dresser drawer. Yeah. She spent the night in the dresser drawer. And like, so it was my fault because I was putting up our swimsuits. Like we yeah. let our swimsuits out to dry and I, and I was putting them up. The night before, and I had opened your drawer to put your swimsuit in there. But you, there. you had only had it open for like for like a second. A I was putting up moment. a single thing, but 
She is dark like the night and the shadows, yep. and she's a sneaky, quiet ninja. She's so quiet. She must have jumped in. And like, I just don't understand how she got past me. Or like, did I get distracted and like check my phone with the drawer open and then close it? I don't know what happened. I don't know how she got in there. She seemed perfectly content. She was just like, that was a good sleep. I'm awake now. Time for my breakfast. Let like, me out. Yeah, let me out. She was very calm. She was very calm. She did, I, I don't she never meowed. She, yeah, yeah. She was so calm. She, she probably, was like she probably polite. loved it because she loves being in tiny enclosed spaces. So she was probably weirdo. like, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I get to sleep in here tonight. My yeah. favorite spot. I just like, it's just such a weird mystery. I don't know how she got past me. I and like I, I have to like guard her at times. Like when she's in a mood where she wants to hop in the dresser, she really wants she to hop in the dresser. the dresser. Yeah, <laughs> she does love it. But it's just oh, and she's, strange cat. Yeah, and she used to like. Um, and we again, we've gotten better just watching her. But like even like the bathroom drawers, mm-hmm. like if you have it open, she wants to get in there and then squeeze herself through the door drawer and then behind it and then sit on the drawer below it. And then you're like, I can't shut this drawer now because you're sitting there. And she's just looking out at you. But then she gets kind of stuck. So you have to take out the drawers. Uh, oh, so turdly. Cats. Yeah. All right. So we have a few jobs we can talk about. Caitlin worked at Hot Topic and she did caricatures. Caricatures. Whatever. Moving on. Caricatures. <laughs> well, here. Well, well um, we. Car- I, I did caricatures at Fiesta, Texas. Yes. Specifically. Yeah. Which is like a Six Flags. Yeah. And then I worked as a lifeguard, and I worked at a pottery studio. Yes. Which of these do we want to do first? Should we go, like, in order? Yeah. Do you, do you want to um, do your... Well, I don't want to do in order, because I want to talk about caricatures second. Okay. But um, do you want to start with one of yours? Yeah. I'll start with lifeguard, because I think that I probably mm-hmm. started working first between the two of us, because I started working at 15 years old. Oh, yeah. You totally beat me. I didn't start working until I was, like, 17. Yeah. So the strange thing is that if you want to work as a lifeguard, you can start when you're 15. That is kind of weird. Right, Because right. like when I think of like my cousins that are that young, I'm like, hmm. Hmm. I mean. <laughs> Lives could be in your hands. <laughs> you, I mean, you were a very tall 15-year-old, I'm sure. And, and I, I, I was swimming like at, in high school by that point, and I was a really, really strong swimmer. I'd been swimming my whole life. <clears throat> um, I was qualified for the job because I could lift someone out. I was strong enough for that. I, I could lift someone out of the pool if they needed to be pulled out for a certain reason, or I could do all of the, like the things that were required of of us. But the strange thing is, is before I was even fifteen. I'm, have I told you this story? I don't <clears throat> okay. know. Okay. So before I got my lifeguard certification in the U.S., we were actually living in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh, and there is something called the Bronze Medallion, which is the Australian's version of the Red Cross, which is the, the U.S. lifeguards. It's like Red Cross, but way more syllables. And way more intense. Because really? in Australia... Oh, yeah. Things are like, more intense. Things are more intense, I guess. <laughs> so it's like you had to swim all this, like, you know, you had to swim a long distance with your clothes on. Like, the instructor would, like, come at you and try to grab you and yank you under. And you had to escape from him and, like, what? do all these That's exercises. Nightmarish. It was... Well, but that's something that happens. Like that's a, like a very, very likely thing to happen. If someone oh, yeah. jumps into a pool, and you go to try to save them, they're gonna try to like crawl up on you to if they're crawl panicking. Up on you. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. So, so that's like, so true. I got this like bronze medallion when I was like fourteen. I couldn't, I couldn't work overseas, but Eric, my brother was getting certified. So I'm like, ah, I'll do it too. That seems kind of cool. I so I just did it. I don't know <laughs> just why. For fun. Just for fun. Um, and uh, I passed the test. I got it. I don't know what good it did me. I just have a little metal. <laughs> but um, so I thought that that's what lifeguarding might be in the U.S. So I was like, that's kind of cool. So I tried out for it in the U.S. And you only have to swim like 500 meters or something like that. It was like nothing. <laughs> it was like it was like the, 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 the like. I'm the, assuming the, you have to do like CPR and stuff, right? Also. Yeah, but CPR is just like the, there's no like CPR isn't super physical. Oh, I, I think yeah. that almost anyone can do CPR. And I guess in the, in, in, in the area that we're in, there's just like very small pools. So I guess it makes sense. You don't need to swim like 2,000 meters with your clothes on under a certain time or something. I'm not sure what the Australian was one, but I, I knew it, was, it, was, it was pretty intense. It took like 
hours for the test oh in, 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 in overseas. That's crazy. And in the U.S., they're like, oh, here you go. It was pretty intense. It was way easier in the U.S. to get certified. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> so it's like you're 15. Oh, I, there's a very easy, like there's <laughs> low barrier to entry. And I'm like, oh, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That is nuts. I wonder if it's different um, if you're lifeguarding by an ocean. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's way more intense by the oceans. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. I'd imagine because there's like rip tides and you might have to swim a lot further. Oh, yeah. No, no. For, for ocean lifeguards, it's it's way more intense and okay, it is a lot a more rigorous. Yeah. Yeah. For for ocean lifeguards, that's there's a whole training program. There's like it's a whole like thing to get <laughs> trained up as a lifeguard. You you like take a months long thing. Mm, okay. For it. That so makes it's, sense it's, for like ocean stuff. Yeah, for oceans. It's a totally different thing. Plus, in the oceans one, you, you drive boats, you drive buggies oh, yeah, that's true. You all have, like, sorts train of on the vehicles etc yeah so no no you're safe don't worry but <laughs> surprisingly low bar where we live for pool lifeguards um you know but, what's funny uh, is the, the pool you were lifeguarding at was the pool across the street from my house but you started the summer we moved yeah was, that's a crazy story we almost lived near each other yeah and we we wouldn't we were we would have been in a separate school district so I'm not sure if we would have ever met. What if we had met at state art competition? <sighs> we might have. Did Wait. you go to state art competition? I did some sort of art something. I went to the state science fair. Oh, I went to the state science competition or uh, uh, art competition. Well, I might have done that too. I did do some art stuff. I just don't remember like what school it was at. Uh, too many schools. So many schools. We both moved a lot. I'm not sure if you heard that episode, but. Yeah, yeah, we both we both oh, knew a lot, been, but, but we crazy. were both we at in the same city. Yeah, like around the same age. It was just you started working the same, like the same summer or the same year we moved. Yeah, it's crazy. so we like I barely missed you, but I would have been at that pool. That all the time job because it was, was across the street. Great though, for yeah. for me, I just like have so many pleasant memories actually of lifeguarding because I. Loved the pool. I loved swimming. I loved being outdoors, but also with the pool right there. Yeah. You know, it's like I loved outdoor. And, and you know, in, in Houston, it's really, really hot, especially during the summer. But if you have a pool right there, it's the perfect match. As a lifeguard, can you like hop in frequently though? So in, in most pools that you know, there's there's the mega pools where there's like a whole rotation. But most pools I worked at were small, little local pools where there were two or max three people. But most of the time it was just two people, mm -hmm. and so one person was on the stand and one person was off, and you would either check people in or you would maintain the pool or you would do whatever. And at any time you could pretty much hop in and mm -hmm. cool off if you're off duty. If you're on duty. That's a whole other thing. But when you're off duty, um, yeah, you can like clean the pool. Uh, you can just get a net and clean the pool or, you know, you can hop in when, when you want to if you want to cool off. Cool. Um, you can't just use the pool recreationally, but yeah, you can hop in. Yeah, just to cool <clears throat> off. But uh, I just have so many memories because oftentimes when you're off, if the bathrooms are clean, if the chlorine is up to date, if everything is good and you're just there checking people in, but no one's coming in, I, I just read a lot. In That's the off awesome. period, I'll just go to work and I'd read my books and I'll just go into fantasy land and like it would be hot, but I could hop in the pool. <laughs> you said and, like, fantasy land, but I thought you said fancy land. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some of the books I read had fancy lands too, you know? Fa fantasy lands or fancy lands. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my favorite thing is when like lightning happened or storms happened uh, and we got to kick everybody out uh, and I could just read and it was like rainy. summer storms when it's raining and like you're just reading yes. at work. It was great. Even even as a like, pool you, goer, not someone who was working at the pool, yeah. I still really liked when it rained and you were at the pool. For some reason, even though you have to get out, there's just something yeah. about like you and your friends get out and you go under the umbrellas and yep. it's like, oh, well, we just got to eat snacks yeah. while we yeah. wait. And it's just that summer rain. It's kind rain, of like warm it's still. Kind of warm, yeah. yeah. And you're like, mm, just going to eat my goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so great. So good. Yeah. Just a lot of really good memories from lifeguarding. There are some bad memories. And, and Did all you ever have it, to save anyone? Yeah, I mean that's that's the job. I know, but I didn't know if it like happened like on your on your watch. Yeah, three three summers. Yeah, it happened multiple times. Um, and the scariest thing is they were all kids, and mm. all accidents were from parents not being good parents. I mean, I just I, I hate to say that, but like like you know we are there as Overwatch. We are there to you know make sure people don't injure themselves. But if you know that your kid can't swim, don't just like 
Let them in the water. Let them run into the deep end and drown. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's there's some people like, like, and and I, I, you know, the first time that happens, you're like ah, but then <laughs> honestly, that happened multiple times. I just like looked at that person. I knew that they were going to do it, and I, you know, we, you could help prevent stuff like this from happening later on. But there's one time where this little girl walked in and she was like, yay, pool. And she runs and then she jumps in and then she's like drowning. And I'm like, <laughs> what? what? I don't understand this. Did you? Is this the very first pool you've ever seen? And you've just like seen people use pools in the movies and you just don't understand. How old like, was the little girl? Like maybe three or something. Are you saying like her parents did? I mean, obviously she didn't understand. Yeah. And her parents like... I'm not sure what her parents were doing, but they didn't like <laughs> hop in after her. And she just like jumped in and just in immediately started drow drowning. Not, not like immediately started drowning, but she was coughing. She was struggling. She couldn't keep her head above water. Oh my like, gosh. All this. Oh, yeah. That's so crazy. So crazy. And then like another time there was, uh, I'm, I'm wondering how to tell the story without seeming attacking, but there was a group of adults <clears throat> and they were all standing around like, I'm not sure if they were just drinking juice boxes or if there's wine boxes or whatever, but like they were just having like, like adult chit chat time while their kids played. But one of their kids was like one and they had their backs turned to their kids and their kids were on the steps. And then the kid like walked forward and not, you know, it's like, I, you have a lot of people to keep track of. You have to keep track of all these people and there's all these strategies. You can like count them and make sure you see a constant amount of heads in the water oh and if a head if you if you're counting you're like wait i just counted 15 and now there's 14 there's a head missing where is where's the head where's the head <laughs> where where did that th person go you know so that it's seems like stressful you have to scan back and forth because one person was in charge of maintaining the whole pool where we were at and I, I scan back and this kid is like face down in the water all the adults are like just chit-chatting and so, and I, I have to jump in and I have to give like, you know, a little bit of assistance to the Baby kid. Baby CPR? And then like the mom was like so upset and she called her husband and she ran off to the emergency room even though the kid was fine. But like, I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, like, there there are some watch. stressful <laughs> moments. Oh man, that sounds like a really stressful job. <laughs> still, still a lot of good memories from it. Yeah, yeah, but the worst part is like how serious the job is. You know, yeah. it's like, it's a lot of responsibility to take on when you're off it's pretty chill but like when you're on it's you know a lot of responsibility and you know after a period of time you could kind of know who was good who was bad and who you'd have to like look out for more um so there were periods where it wasn't too stressful but when there are a lot of little kids in the pool mm. you're just like oh my gosh just don't don't get in trouble little kids no oh my gosh <laughs> yeah. yeah so that was that was lifeguarding i did that for a while yes. um and it was a it was a good job i think the main thing is oftentimes with these intro jobs you can't get enough hours you can't get, like work enough to make some serious income well also often, it's like minimum wage <clears throat> yeah minimum wage i really but didn't oftentimes, make like anything you that that's kind of what you want to a certain degree like in high school you don't want to work all the time like seven yeah. days a week during yeah. during summer breaks unless you really need to or if you want to but I think it's more about like gaining experience. The income's yeah. kind of like a nice little bit of extra freedom. Like you don't have to. Well, some people they 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 need to, or like they need to start saving up for college. Or no, that's true. I was saying yeah. more like for for like our personal experiences. Yeah. we were lucky enough that it was like more about getting the experience. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that sounds very stressful. <laughs> it, it sometimes was. <laughs> <laughs> um, my. Well, I guess I'll talk about my <laughs> first job. Um, was this really my first job? That sounds so weird. Yeah, it was. My first job was um, I worked at Six Flags, and I was a caricature artist. Oh, wow. I thought, wait, that was my I thought, first. I thought you did Hot Topic first. No, because Hot Topic. I don't even know my wife. <laughs> no, I did, I did caricatures. There was like a few kids, um, like a couple of kids in my school that did it that I was friends with. Mm -hmm. Um and I was like, oh, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. You know, it was like my art friends. Mm -hmm. And um, the, like, <laughs> it, was, it was like kind of a scary job to do as your first job because there's like a performance aspect to mm -hmm. it. Which, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not as scary as lifeguarding now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like people's lives on the line. But it's like, 
you're you're drawing on demand and you have to make people happy otherwise you don't get paid or, so, well, so you don't so, get paid otherwise you don't make money and they monitor how much money every person makes so so if you draw someone and the person like they could refuse it they can refuse it yeah wow yeah so um but, but one of the scariest things is the interview because i came in and um they're like the guy interviewing me was just like draw me <laughs> and i was like uh, uh, it's, had, had you practiced caricatures before no. going in? <laughs> <laughs> well, there wasn't like YouTube. Like, yeah, I, I would I have guess. had to go buy a book or something. Oh, yeah, that, that makes you sense. Know? So they didn't. Pr- did they provide on the job training? Yes, okay. they did, but not the, not until after the interview. Oh my gosh! So I'm just like trying to draw this guy's face, and like I drew stuff, but caricatures. I never done like that style before because there's yeah. a very distinct style. Yeah, big of, head. Like bold but not features. Even, yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's just very distinct. There's like a few noses, a few eyes. A well, few, I'll get into that. I'll oh, get into okay, that yeah. later. Um, but there's a very like when you look at a photo, it's just about the exaggeration and the cartooniness yeah. of it. Um, it's got a very distinct look, and I drew more like slightly anime kind of style stuff. You know, <laughs> that'd be like, so great if he's like draw me, and you just draw me as <laughs> like an anime boy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I also never drew guys. I only drew girls. Oh. And so I was like, oh, God. Draw him as an anime girl. <laughs> and he was bald. Ah. <laughs> and I was like, uh, You should add that like, little gleam, gleam effect to his. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, I did good enough. And like, so funny. one of the things was after I finished, he was like, you know, what would you do to improve it? And I don't remember most of what I said, but like the one thing I remember You just blacked out. <laughs> yeah, I know it. It was also a long time ago. I was like I was like seventeen or sixteen. Yeah. Um but one thing I remember was I said like I wish I had um different line thicknesses because I drew this all with the same line thickness and I feel like it'd be a lot more interesting if like some lines were thinner and some lines were thicker. And that like really impressed him mm. because like line thickness is a huge thing in caricatures because oh. you use the thickness to um, like hint at shadows. So like the thickness of the line is also a way of adding shadows. Mm-hmm. Oddly, like the line under your nose is going to have, it's going to start thin and then get thick and then go thin again mm. because the thicker part, that's where there's a little shadow under your nose and same with like your chin. It's going to have like a thicker line under there and there's all these different things about it. So when you draw, do you draw with two different thicknesses or do you have a, you have a, uh, um, it's, and you can twist it to yeah. make it thinner or thicker. It's, um, it's, it's like a brush. Oh, yeah, yeah. The marker is almost like a brush where it's kind of flexible and it comes to a point, but if you angle it, then it's thick. So it's almost like a, yeah, it's like a brush. Modular, modular thickness. Oh, and they're like the best markers. Oh. The best markers. <laughs> best. <laughs> the best. When like, you drew, did you sketch it and then go, or did you go no, straight to marker? You go straight to marker. Oh. There is no pencil. There is no do-over. <laughs> oh, jeez. And you have to be able to do a face in two to three minutes. Max. So it's like two to three minutes for a face, um, you know, five or so minutes if you're going to color the face, mm-hmm. five or so minutes if it's black and white face and body, and then like eight minutes if it's full body color, Oof. which is like, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And I don't like to work fast. I like to take my time. <laughs> I don't like people watching me when I draw. <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's, it's like all the things you don't like. And I just thought it'd be a cool job because I knew two people who had done it. And it was like, it's art related. <laughs> but it was very stressful. And I did, once I got the, the feel for it, I did yeah. like it. Um, it's also hard because, like, as a caricature artist, you have to decide: Am I going to be a nice caricature artist, or am I going to be a mean caricature? Be artist? a nice one. Oh, of course, I was a nice one. Yeah. Most people were nice ones, but yeah. we had some that were kind of mean. But it's like because what you're doing essentially is you're looking at these person's features, and for every, at least this is how I was trained, for every feature, there's a certain set of lines. And you do those lines in a certain way and you train yourself. Like I can, I can do an eye, like a caricature style eyeball with my eyes closed. I know exactly where to start. I know which lines are thin, which lines are thick. I know how to adjust it. And so like you have this, like the same way you will draw an eye. But then if this person has very large eyes or like upturned eyes or downturned eyes or very small eyes or squinty eyes, you're going to like do the exact same lines 
no matter what, basically, and then just like adjust them. Mm. And, uh, and you know, this, this is, makes me think of the, the you know, in, in like Skyrim and in those oh, totally. RPG it's games. Just like that. It's just like the face, and you're just dragging the sliders it's to make like them that. like big jaw, little jaw, strong it's jaw, like little that. weak jaw. Like yeah. you know, like <laughs> like the nose is always the exact same type of lines. Like the mouth, the exact same. It's all the same lines. You just and you do them in the same order every time, and that's how you get really fast. Mm -hmm. um, so like eventually, I did get pretty good. There were still like like certain types of people that were easier for me to draw. But anyway, so since were bald people easiest? No, bald people sucked. Oh, really? Yeah. I liked girls with hair. Well, I guess they all have hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like, well, oh, I like what? drawing bald hair. Bald girls, you know? I like drawing hair. Yeah. So I liked, I liked, and I liked drawing girls because I just like drawing long hair, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so if it was a guy with long hair, I'd like drawing him too. But also girls were easier for me to draw because I'd drawn a lot of girls. Yeah. It's easier for me to make a drawing look feminine rather than masculine. Hmm. But, of course, had to learn how to do it because that was 50% of the clientele. Yeah. Um, was it about 50-50? Yeah, it was about 50-50. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, since you're looking at that person's feature and then deciding whether to downplay it or up, because you can't, like, play up every single thing. You have to yeah. decide, like, oh, they got a big mouth and tiny eyes, <laughs> so I've got to give them a big mouth and tiny eyes yep. or whatever. But you could you could be mean about it or nice about it. <laughs> like, you can make them look better than they do in real life or worse than they do in real life. But I was always a nice one because, you know, I wanted people well, you to like that tip? it. I wanted, yeah. Actually, no, we didn't get tipped. What? No. I um, feel like a character to ours, that'd be the perfect opportunity to get tips. No, sometimes people would give us stuff for free. Like, hmm. they'd, like, get a, like, oh, it was always dumb stuff. It was like, oh, I won this, like, prize over here, and I don't want it. You guys can <laughs> <laughs> But I don't remember getting Hold tips. this. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember getting tips. That's so interesting. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, man. And my first, one of the, like, worst times, actually, it had nothing to do with drawing people. It was just my first, like, week there. Um, you know, I was trying to like get to know people yeah. and like, there's a few different booths around, um, and you'd be stationed at like one booth for the day, but you could walk around on your break yeah. to go see other people. So when, um, I was on my break, the person I was with, um, took me to like ride one of the rides. Yeah. Um, cause we could on our break or just any time over the summer, we had a free pass. We could come ride the rides. And so I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I'm trying to like be friendly and stuff. And it was a spinny ride. Oh no. And oh, I'm gonna I, get dizzy just thinking about it. I was, and it, this is like San Antonio. Hot. Hot. So hot. And Fiesta, Texas is like in a quarry. Like there's no wind. It's just like that, like, um, uh, oh, what is, what is the, the word? Like the blacktop on pavement. Asphalt. Asphalt. That asphalt, uh, asphalt <laughs> smell. That and ass like, smell. <laughs> and. <laughs> Like, we, we did the spinny ride, and then, like, we went to go see other people at one of the booths near the spinny ride, and I was just like, hi. And I was so dizzy, and I was so hot, and I was so sweaty. Oh. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to throw up. I, it was just, like, everything in me to not throw up. And then, like, they wanted me to draw over there while I was over there just to kind of, like, see my style and, like, do you, like, we would often do like test drawings yeah. and stuff. So I just like sat down to do like practice and I was like, I don't feel good. <laughs> I like somehow made it through, but I was like, I'm from that point onward, I would never do any rides on my break. Oh man. No matter what. Yeah. Cause like no rides. one, one spinny ride can throw me off for a day. You're done for a whole day. Like yeah. oh, the whole day ruined. Yeah. Whole day ruined. And just imagine it like in the heat and you're trying to work. No, I'm getting like hot and sweaty oh. just thinking about it. Oh, oh. There actually was a problem with um, people like like one of my one of my friends that worked there had, like passed out a couple times because you're not allowed to leave your booth and you're not allowed to sit unless you're drawing. So you have to stand and you have to be at your booth. So you can't like go get water and you can't sit down and it's. You know, hundred. You didn't degrees. have water bottles with you. I mean, we did, but sometimes you like run out. Oh my gosh! You know, so I have one. Oh. I have a friend that passed out twice. Um, <clears throat> and so did, did you they could, like, like fall and hit their head on the asphalt? Or were they no, able to like she, slowly? She kind like... of like sat down. All right, yeah. As she was passing out, or like <laughs> as it was coming on. Yeah. So she didn't like fall and crack her head or anything, but it's pretty bad. Yeah. It like became a problem. I never, I never passed out, but it was. It was so hot. It's probably because you were really responsible and refilled your water on every single break. I did. <laughs> <laughs> How'd I know? <laughs> it makes me thirsty. 
Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty fun. Every now and then, I, I haven't done it in a long time, but um, like a good way to practice. Because, like, the worst thing you can do to practice is mm. to draw a generic face. Mm. Because you're, that's not what the job is. You know, a generic face is just, like, it's, like, the opposite. Have you ever done a character draw of me? I have not. Hmm. I, I don't like drawing beards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll shave? Yeah, shave, and I'll do a character of you. Uh, okay. But I, I used to, like, I, I, to practice, I would go through magazines hmm. and do, like, celebrities and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or, or, like, models. Um, just, you know, because that's who's in magazines. So if I found, like, a big enough picture. But I liked doing celebrities because then I could show somebody and be like, who is this? To see, uh. like, if I, got, if I did it well. So I could, like, show my parents and be like... Who is this? Nice. Um, I think the last time I did that was just for fun. I did it like over Christmas or sometime when we were visiting my parents in Atlanta. Oh, I think I think the last caricature I've seen you do <clears throat> was actually for my sister for a birthday card or something. Oh, did I do a caricature of your sister? <laughs> I remember you doing a, a, a sketch of her face for some reason. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She'd be fun to draw. She's got great hair. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm I'm the worst because I have a beard and a beard. short hair. Yeah, lame. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that I there's... could draw you with flowing locks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. Do that. So so there, there, it seems like there's a lot <laughs> of options. You could do like color, no color, face, no or like well, full body and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that. So did did you the amount you get? So you were just an hourly employee. I was just an hourly employee. Okay, so you didn't get paid more for doing more expensive things. No, no. Um, but oh my gosh, doing the full bodies was like like I didn't mind doing faces. Doing full bodies was often really hard, and I I would like desperately try to direct people in a certain direction <laughs> because like well that that's so interesting because you're not you're not um, incentivized to charge more then. No, all you like you just want. It's like you're you're not incentivized to Just charge upsell people. Upsell them. You're not even incentivized to 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 do like draw people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like I like doing because otherwise you're bored. <laughs> um, I think maybe I mean maybe there was like part of my money that came from it. I don't remember because I do remember like trying to upsell people. Like, so uh. there was some reason, but it could have just been because I was a goody two shoes and I wanted to like do the best. Um, I want to be Because you would the still like best. document how many sales you made. Uh-huh. So they still like monitored how well you did. <clears throat> Interesting. So it, I could have just been upselling for that. Were you ever number one, Caitlin? I think I was. <gasps> wow. Yeah. I, I think I was actually like pretty high up there. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, when people wanted you to do full body stuff, they could, that sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they could ask for anything. And so it's not. That, that sounds even worse. <laughs> but it's like, okay, when you, when you learn how to draw the faces, yeah. you, okay, like I said, it's like there's a specific way we yeah. were trained to do eyes, a specific way we were trained to do noses, and you just adjust. But if somebody's like, I want to be a princess riding a motorcycle, I'm like, I don't know how to draw a motorcycle. Uh. And then you just have to, like, do your best. And you didn't have smartphones, so you couldn't look for no, reference images. No, you're just like, how do I draw a motorcycle? You know, and like you can draw it okay and try to distract by other stuff, yeah. but or try to like, oh well, I'll just cover most of it with her princess dress. Yeah, you know, just show the wheels in the front and back, or, or just show the wheels spinning, kicking up a, a lot smoke. of smoke. You often did have to do stuff like that, yeah. like oh, somebody wanted to be on a jet ski. Well. Splashing water is going to cover two thirds of that jet ski. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that because that's really hard to yeah. just like. Then you're drawing a whole scene and background and everything. Yeah, you got you know? to background. Like, you heck? have to do like the outfit. You have to do, um, uh, you know, whatever props and stuff they're asking for. And yeah. like, if it's not something you've drawn before, it's really hard to just like in your mind think of that thing and draw it even if like you you can picture it generally when you think about like the details and how they go together on a 2d drawing yeah so i know i know you used to do like request drawings with your brother where like he'd like like say something completely random and nonsensical did that come from caricature practice no that was long before oh that was long before it's so funny that you were doing request drawings before yeah that was just me and my brother and like it could be terrible (laughs) because it wasn't my job (laughs) Um, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, that was, that was kind of stressful. 
doing the full body ones. But it was still a fun job. It's yeah. like... It's do you, do you have some things- nostalgia for it of like simpler times? Not really in terms of like simpler times. I, I wish that it was a skill I still like practice because I think mm. it's cool. But at the same time, it's also something that I like have avoided telling people around me because the first thing that happens if you like mention that you used Everyone to be a caricature it. artist, everybody wants a caricature of them. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I don't have my markers. And I'm like, you look, you can't, I don't, I cannot do it without yeah. my special markers that have like the bendy tip, yeah. you know, cause I can't get my different line thicknesses. I mean, I can, but it's like very hard. I have to like force it, yeah. like go back and make certain lines thicker and it just doesn't look as good. And then you're like, it's harder to draw someone, you know, in a lot of ways because uh, you're so familiar with their face that like, if it's, it's hard not to fit totally them into right, the formula. And like, if it's not totally right. You're like, no, that's wrong. It doesn't look like you. But a stranger, you're like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes people would bring um, pictures, like printed out pictures of like, oh, can you draw um, like my my kid or something? But they're not here or like my, you know, oh, whatever. Oh, and their face was, was too small was or so something? Small, <laughs> and you're like, huh. and so, yeah, or sometimes it's like pictures of babies. <laughs> yeah. And you're like. All the babies look the same. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you just have your generic baby template you just whip out? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. But, yeah. It, it, so, so, so you didn't ever do Six Flags. But I remember once no, that you, was Six Flags. No, no, but you didn't ever, like, ride the rides in Six Flags. But didn't you, like, use the, the oh, water, yeah, water yeah, park yeah. pass some? Yeah, my friend who worked there and I would... Um, would go and do the water park yeah, like, see, that's, all the time. That, that's, that's way better than the land part anyways, especially during summer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus, like, we didn't really want to run into coworkers. Uh, so, and there's no caricatures in the water park part of it. So we just float the lazy river for hours. And that's all we did. We just great. floated the lazy river. <laughs> it, was, it was nice. I, I do look back on that fondly. Yeah, yeah. There's something about, like, summer and, like, water attractions that yeah. just, like, inspires nostalgia it could be like beach lake pools whatever just something about like the hot sun but you're cold because like you're evaporating the water like that like memory just makes me happy yeah you want to talk about your other your other um yeah yeah. job (laughs) i don't actually know how i got this job i don't know this is after lifeguarding so yeah, I lifeguarded um, for three summers, then I went to college, and then the first year I came back from college, I wasn't able to get an internship yet, so this is f- <clears throat> summer after freshman year. Mm-hmm. Summer after sophomore, summer after junior year, I did two different internships for my uh, But then engineering. that's like real job level. That's real job level stuff, and those were other, other stories corporate perhaps, stuff. you know, very corporate stuff, <clears throat> lots of wasted time. Presentations were like, it's like your summer project is to like do this research, put together this thing. And then like nothing comes from it. And you're like, that was a complete waste of time. And there, I, I believed in my project. Anyways, different thing, different thing. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> um, the, the pottery place. The pottery place. I just don't, maybe it was a friend of a friend or something like that. But I somehow ended up working at this pottery studio. And is it one of those ones where like people would come in and paint? Yeah. And then you fire them? Yeah, and I was I, I. Those were so cool. Those, those were pretty fun, and you could those get some really, really cool effects if you spent the time. But like, I actually didn't 100 percent like dealing with customers because <laughs> I just like so, some. I, I can get into some customer stories later on, but like, I just it just bothered me, and I didn't have like a high BS <laughs> like battery that i could like fill up or something <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's, it's I, I just wasn't the most patient mm-hmm. perhaps i might say so i i turned myself into a specialist of the kiln so Ooh, I was, that's a great title specialist of the kiln. specialist of the kiln so i would take all of the stuff that people made load it arrange it okay and i took pictures of the arrangements i made mm. because you're like fire in the kiln is very expensive because you're heating up Oh, so you like fill it as efficiently as possible. Yeah, so it's like you 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 like will um, get everything of a certain height. You'd lay it all out. You do an arrangement, and all of them would have these little spikes that you'd set it on, and then you'd build up the next layer, then build up the next layer, and build up the next layer. Did so you the break full... any ever? Not, not that I remember. Wow. 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 Um, yeah, so not that I remember. So it, it either didn't affect me. So you were, or you were just really good. Or I was really at good. Your stacking. Wow. 
So yeah, I'd stack everything. And then, um, you know, when, when, so if you, if you guys don't know how this works, <clears throat> there's a lot of like pre-done templates, like a bowl or a spoon holder or a mug or whatever it is. That are just missing the painted glaze. <clears throat> yeah. So people come in and they paint, but that's just the color. I still have to do, I'm not sure if it was multiple dips, but I had to do the clear outside oh. on top. So after people are done painting, then we dip it and, and it looks like green, mm -hmm. but it, it, it fires clear. So I had to do all of the dipping, the post-processing um, of the clear, and then I had to fire it. And then I had to clean up the sharp edges afterwards because oh. when, it, when it fires, um, the color's on there, then the clear is over it. But there's like spikes, like on a mug, um, I'm going to hold do this for the uh, people watching on YouTube. But there's three spikes that the cup is resting on. When you fire it, there's three shards of glass. You kind of have to break it off. Oh. Then there's three shards of glass on the bottom, like shooting out. I didn't realize that. It's like that. kind of resting on nails. So I'd have to go, go around with a Dremel and like Dremel that off. and that like smooth so it out you're so good at flattening resin drips? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also why I'm like paranoid about eye protection because I think once um, a shard of glass shot out and like I'm not sure if it like penetrated my eye or what I went to like an ophthalmologist and everything but like I was worried that I'd like stabbed my eye oh with my like a glass shard from this and I'm like I should have been wearing two levels of protection why didn't like OSHA 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's yeah, like because uh, I was scary. wearing safety glass but like you know safety glass there's gaps yeah so I should have been wearing a whole face shield. A face shield, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because also you don't want that glass embedding anywhere in your face. No, yeah. That'd yeah. be bad. That'd be bad. So, oh, man. Uh, but, you know, like general customer service things, like people having unreasonable demands. And also at a place like this, it's not like a clothes, like, I'm, I'm sure at clothing stores, there's other issues that might come up when you talk about Hot Topic. But like the place where I, I was working, a lot of the end results depended on someone's skill. Yeah, and so if they if they didn't like it, were they upset? Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> like, well, I'm sorry that you suck. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that you suck. Sucks to suck. Sucks <laughs> to suck. <laughs> but, but I also think that like one thing that kind of bothered me is when parents would like drop off kids that were too young, and this use this as a babysitting service. Oh, they would you drop know? kids off. I think sometimes, what? like you know, there, there's like a an edge of like what's acceptable. Like, of course, parents dropping off their 16 year olds. No, that's fine. That's okay. Parents dropping off two year olds. Well, I mean, like obviously, obviously duh, you know. But like, there are some borderline cases where they might be like 10 or something. Well, I mean, like imagine like <clears throat> dropping off a kid who shouldn't be there. Like, I'm not sure what a borderline is. I'm just gonna say 10. Just to choose a number, I'm not sure. There, there could I, be. I would, some. I would think like a ten year old's parent should like should have some an adult with them. Yeah, but like you're in a pottery place, and like the 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 person may not be good at painting. They may be doing things wrong. They may be using up too much color. <laughs> they're they're surrounded by lots of breakable, breakable things. things. Yeah, they're using up supplies which are costly. You know, so it's like there are definitely a lot of borderline cases where like. And, like, when they drop the kids off, you don't know whether the kid is going to be a problem kid or not. Mm -hmm. You know, but, like, the biggest clientele were kids and parents having, like, like occupying their kids' time. Not Gosh. many adults came in to, to like, That's crazy. do it. Um, so, so, I've been to those, but, like, my mom would take my brother and I. Yeah. And, yeah. and, 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 and a lot of parents that. were responsible and were with their kids and stuff like that. But some would just, like... Because it was next to like a like sh like a, a grocery store, so I think some parents were just like like drop okay, them off and then go grocery yeah, shopping. like okay, I'm gonna drop the kid off at the gr uh, the, the pottery place, keep them entertained for 20 or 30 minutes while I go shop and listen to a podcast or something. I don't know. That's <laughs> you know? crazy. So it's like uh, oh, borderline man. cases like that. So it's like there were some things that like we in particular had to deal with, um, and. You know, there was a lot of people dissatisfied with various aspects that were outside of our control. And I'm like, sucks to suck. Sucks to suck. Also, like <clears throat> the firing process, they didn't understand it. And I'm like, well, we kind of explain it when you come in and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. It sounds like you liked lifeguarding better. I, I, I think I liked lifeguarding a lot more, honestly. Despite the pressure <laughs> of having people's yeah. lives in your hands. I think it was nice, though, to get a... Um, <laughs> 
customer service facing job. It was like, you know, it was interesting learning like about like the cash register and like, yeah. you know, doing the deposits and like, you know, running a store in that way, like oh, opening, closing, doing like the like businessy, like that reminds local me. things. That reminds me of like when I was at Fiesta, Texas, mm -hmm. um, when you closed, you had to take the till with all the money in it, like to the place you're supposed to drop it off. Yeah. And you don't do that until the park is empty. And you had to go through like the back ways. So going like through the back at an empty theme park, holding a giant bag of money is like kind of scary. But cool too. But cool too. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but like kind of, it's just like, it was just like always kind of creepy and weird. Like, yeah. I think it was You're more like, about I feel like, like an adult should be doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the money part, but it was just kind of creepy being in like an empty theme park in the yeah. dark. Yeah. Was, well, kind of was your stallmate with you? No. Oh, really? It would just be one person. Okay, so the because the, there's you're, no you're, need to keep two people there for the closing process. Yeah. Um. So it wasn't something I did all the time, but and sometimes you were at a booth alone. Wow, huh, so, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Closing up was kind of nice. Like we would put on music and would clean and like you know there's yeah. always like the people like that closing. you're with are <laughs> like what makes or breaks jobs. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. So so the the people that I was with at the pottery studio were good, but I liked lifeguarding the. Well, certain parts of it. It was also stressful. So I like this job the most. Yeah. <laughs> great coworkers. Yes. Great flexibility. Yes. Good good business partner. Not Thank the you. best work-life balance, but no. other than that, it's pretty sweet. What work-life balance? <laughs> um, <laughs> should I? We're running so, kind of yeah. long. I guess I could talk a little bit about Hot Topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so people who watch the gaming streams know this, but uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to like... I don't want to say I was an emo kid, but I dressed like an emo kid. Yes. And I feel like there I is a slight that. difference. Because you were, you, you, your, your, your personality, your outlook on life, a lot has been very careful. You were just, or has been the same throughout your life, but you did love the fashion I side. The fashion. <laughs> well, and I, and I love the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was all, I, like, I liked the music and I liked to dress that way, but I, I was also like a very, very good student. <laughs> like, I did all of my homework. I didn't have, conflicts with my parents or family i had like you know there there was no like unhappiness with like or i mean of course there was stuff that like would bum me out and yeah and, that, and there but, was drama at school and there, and and there was cetera. drama and stuff with like school and friends and whatever just um, normal life stuff yeah, yeah normal life stuff but like generally i was i was just like a kind of shy nerdy kid Mm -hmm. But I like to dress like super emo. And so I shopped a lot at Hot Topic. Super emo. Oh, I we, mean like. We haven't shared any of the, those pictures no, yet, have we? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, but like, you know, plaid skirts and combat boots and like um, like all the uh, armbands with um, like the studs and the studded pyramid belts. I had safety pins in my ears. Like all out. Like I was a little Hot Topic kid. And so. Um, so I started working at Hot Topic. Uh, because you, you liked the store? Yeah, because I, I wanted the employee discount. <laughs> um, and I needed a job like the summer between high school and college. Yep. <clears throat> so I started working there. Um, and like it was kind of intimidating because like because I like was actually like a really good student and like, you know, like, I felt like I was, like, I dressed like the other people that worked there. Oh, but, but I felt like, like I was kind of a poser. Ah, uh, yeah. Because I was actually just, like, I wasn't rebellious at all. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, there was, there was no rebel in me. Um, I was just, like, a good kid. Um, so I always felt like I wasn't quite, like, as cool as the other people that other worked people there. Other people might have been thinking that, too. Maybe. Maybe. You know? Um, but it was mostly just, like folding clothes and greet. they always put me in the front to greet mm -hmm. customers because I was very... Did you ever like work the register? And I worked the register mm -hmm. some um, which I actually preferred doing that because I didn't have to be as cheery. They they would put me often up at the front because I was like the cheeriest person. They're like, hey, just burn off. Like you're like, yeah, because they were probably tired and they're like, yeah, let's put the new person out put there. Put the new person in the front and I was like the least intimidating in some uh, ways. Yeah. Because like... <laughs> I I don't know. I, I think I was like less than too many. I didn't have like I had 
a bunch of ear piercings, but I didn't have like facial piercings. I didn't have like tattoos or anything like that. So I was like maybe a little bit more friendly to the parents coming in with their kids. <laughs> like, I don't know. But, um, but so I'd mostly do that. Um, so it's just a lot of standing there. And just a lot of standing there telling people, did you know about our 20% off sale on combat boots today? <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get one free pyramid belts. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I'd go insane out of boredom. It was kind of boring. The, the, Plus sides were the music was great. Uh So you always had like good, fun music. Um, But most of it was boring because you're just like folding clothes because people are messy. You know, I learned how to fold T-shirts really fast. Still got that skill. (laughs) And that was some good. I could could fold a a mean T-shirt. But it was mostly just like that, letting people into the dressing room. You know, so if you kind, kind of, of alternate between like door greeter and then fold some stuff, go to yeah, door greeter, fold, door, door greeter, greeter fold, which, yeah. which I didn't really like. It's mostly just like you have to be on, you have to be smiling for hours. For hours. How um, many hours for your shifts? Um, I mean, they were like full day shifts. I was full working full time out. Well, not maybe not full time out. Like any given day was mostly like a full day shift. So it's like, but from I wasn't working eight to six or something. Yeah, something like that. Oh wow! Or sometimes it'd be like the evening mm-hmm. shift. Um, one time, and I was like, "This is relatively early when I started. It might have been like just a few days in." Um, like <laughs> this uh, woman, like is walking by. I was in the front of the store, and this woman was walking by, and she kind of like um, stops outside the store, uh, looks up, kind of like looks into it. And then, like, kind of starts to keep to keep walking. Um, and she kind of had, like, a frown on her face. Mm-hmm. And then she comes back, and she grabs a shirt off the hanger and leaves. And I was like, uh, uh, you know, I'm, like, looking around. And then she comes back, and she's like, well, you failed the test. She was, a like, a district manager or something. And she was like, when, you, when I was walking by and you saw me, Looking into the store, you should have said, hello, welcome to Hot Topic. Please come in. Did you know about these sales? And, of course, I didn't because, like, she was kind of far out of the store, and she had a big frown on her face. Like, she looked at it like she didn't like it. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm not going to talk to that lady. And then she was like, and then you let me come up and steal a shirt? And I was just like, who is this woman? I'm terrified. I almost started crying. Oh, my god. Because this gosh. is, like, a few days into it, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't handle this. <laughs> I can't handle this. I'm like, you're, like, a few days into the job. Yeah. What? And it's and it, and it's like it's not like someone who was gonna try to steal the shirt would do it that way. They wouldn't yeah. just like walk up in front of me and like take it and walk out. You know what I mean? Like it, I feel like it wasn't. She really had like good more test. confidence than like someone. Yeah. Who would be stealing it would have or something? Yeah, it was just like I, I just I felt very personally attacked. And what are you supposed to do? Like run after her and tackle her? Yeah. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> like. I, like call for security? I guess so, but like, I don't know. It was, I panicked. I froze up. <laughs> I, uh, I failed my test. I still kept the job, which was fine. But like she would occasionally come back to like check on things. And I was just like, I don't like this one. I did <laughs> not like days when she was in there. I felt like she always didn't like me. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was very traumatizing. So, <laughs> so she only got to do the test once. The test was only once. I don't know if she ever did anything to other people i don't know if she did it to me because when she came by she saw that i was new yeah and i maybe she had tested other people in the past um i don't remember any hiring any new people while i was still there so i don't remember people being there that were newer than me but maybe there were um i don't know uh but yeah that's mean it was really mean um but on the plus side i got a 40 percent off employee discount (laughs) and i spent spent all of it all of my money (laughs) hot topic i would just like on my lunch breaks i would eat super quickly and then i would come back to my own store and try on all the stuff i'd been eyeballing all day i'd like pre-pick it out in my brain like ooh, what do i want to try on today and i would literally spend my whole paycheck <laughs> like which is weird because i'm not like a big spender but i think like i knew i wouldn't have this job for super long it was just like a temporary job before college yeah and I was like, well, the smart thing is to buy everything now <laughs> 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 while I have this discount. You know, it was 40% off. So, so fun, interesting question now that I'm like thinking back on this. One of the things that we do with Evan and Caitlin is we sell merchandise. You can go to shopevanandcaitlin.com to check that out. Nice promo here. But it's so interesting because 
Now we're sell- selling t-shirts. And a while ago in the past, you sold t-shirts at Hot Topic. I did. <laughs> this was unrelated to me working at Hot Topic. I think I might have mentioned that I used to work there when uh. I like, um, <clears throat> like signed up for it. But one thing I noticed when I was working there is because I used to follow a lot of artists online, like back on like DeviantArt and stuff. Um, ah, DeviantArt. I know. And I, there was like one of the artists that I followed one day I noticed her shirts showed up at Hot Topic and I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, I follow this girl and here's her mermaid on a t-shirt. What? How? This is so crazy. And so then I looked into it and like you could submit your designs to be on Hot Topic t-shirts. Yeah. And it was like, there was, it wasn't heavily advertised and you had to do it through corporate and stuff. Um, but so I like emailed them and sent some of my artwork and like sent them my website with all my art and they liked it and they picked out a few designs. So I had two t-shirts and a hoodie at Hot Topic for a limited time. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, it was cool. I have, do you have any of them left? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean. I've seen the t-shirts. Yeah, I have them here. I'm like, <laughs> should I go get them? Uh, no, no. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was really cool like for that season to do you remember them. what the deal was did you get like a percentage of I, the sales I got royalties yeah royalties ah. it wasn't much <laughs> <laughs> was it like one percent or was it like 15 percent no i think it was like five or two five, or something oh, like two? that oh. it, it was a single digit <laughs> a sin- yeah yeah but i didn't have to do anything yeah i just like it was art i had already designed i didn't have to make any adjustments to it it was just like here's my art if you like it you can put it on t-shirts thanks <laughs> but did it you was get cool. free samples um yeah i did get some samples oh, that's of cool. each yeah that's neat. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it was cool. It was kind of unrelated because it was, I think, freshman year of college that I did that. Yeah. Um, so it, it wasn't actually related to that job, but it was still cool. So another thing that some people might know by now about you is you love Halloween. So did, did Hot Topic do anything interesting for Halloween? Well, for, for the entire month of October, we got to dress up in Halloween oh, costumes. Oh, that's cool. So I had an entire month of <laughs> dressing up. It was the best. It's the best. It was so good. <laughs> it was so fun. Um, and you had to get like kind of creative because coming up with a month of costumes, that's like a lot of costumes. And but you, I would you, like you, put things together. And how like, many costumes would you wear? Did you just like put together two or three? No, I had like at least 10. 10? Yeah. Wow. So, and it was all stuff I would like. I mean, it was kind of like interpretive costumes. Yeah. You know, where it was like, I'm going to be a, um, like a gothic Lolita doll, mm-hmm. you know, and I'd like just like wear accessories that kind of worked with it or whatever, you know, and it was all, it was like everything was um, kind of like hot topic themed stuff and i would use a lot of their clothes you know because i was like part of it they yeah. sold halloween costumes so like i had a couple like costume costumes and then most of it was like i would put together i think stuff. that you were too good for them <laughs> you, you 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 went to work for them you bought their own stuff to advertise for them and then you would spend hours of time and thought putting together costumes and makeup to like go yeah <laughs> advertise for them again at the store to sell more stuff for them <laughs> Yeah, it was fun though. I mean, I like the dressing up. The fun, the fun part was dressing up and yeah. shopping. <laughs> I didn't like working there though. But you probably also had to like keep the costumes pretty practical and comfortable because you also had to be yeah. in them and stand around. In yeah, them like I had to have comfortable all shoes and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I had to be, I had to be pretty comfortable. That's but the the weird thing is, when I stopped working there, I felt so awkward about quitting. Like, well, because you're I, you're too nice. Well, and I hadn't worked there super long. Like it was maybe, it was less than a year, maybe six months that I worked there. And then it was just like too much to keep up with work and school, you know? And it was like, why am I doing this? You know? Um, But I felt so awkward quitting that I stopped going in. And that's when I started dressing differently (laughs) because I like couldn't get new hot topic stuff. Because well, I guess I had to change my style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why, like in college, I I had some remnants of my stuff. You were transitioning, but out. I was transitioning out. That's so interesting. Because like I felt awkward going into the <laughs> store. <laughs> There's only uh, one, uh, and I didn't like shopping th- for things online because like I couldn't try them on. That's so funny. I know. <laughs> that's probably the only reason I'm not still dressing like that. <laughs> 
So, so how many months? So I know you did it during the summer before too. But how many months did you do school and work mm-hmm. at the same time? I stopped around the hol- like after the holidays. Mm-hmm. Like I helped out with like the holiday craziness, and I stopped after yeah. that. So it was like the first semester of okay. college. I was still working there. Oh wow! Oh oh, during college you were yeah. Working so like there. when you met me, I was working a hot topic. Ah, <laughs> that's crazy. So let me try to think. So you'd you'd, you'd go to college and then. You would work weekends and evenings. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, I had reduced hours by the time I did college. It wasn't. It was like half shifts, not full shifts. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was only like maybe two times a week okay. or something. It wasn't a ton, but it was still enough. Because like the first period of college, that's like so busy, and there's so mm-hmm. much you can do. And like, I would I have had, I would have had such a hard time like putting time to something that like wasn't advancing college. Yeah, that's, that's why I stopped. Yeah. It didn't last super long. But you, you worked, instead of quitting during the summer, you just felt awkward quitting after summer? Yeah, because I had started it in the summer. Well, that's what most people do. They start in summer and then they end at the end, but you just felt weird quitting? Well, I felt awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so you just kept the job out of awkwardness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! That's so great. It, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense, but it's like, oh, man. It's, it's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, well, I think that wraps up our um, teenage job stories. Yeah, should we move on to thing of the week? Let's do thing of the week. I don't know. <laughs> the timing is a little off for me every time. You should you shouldn't say that because every time you say like, oh, the timing was a little off for me, people who are watching might see that you're bobbing your head not to the timing <laughs> of the thing of the week music, but people who are just listening have no like there's no there's nothing <laughs> there's, there's there. There's no auditory indication just of like, my head swaying off tune. Yeah. Just, 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 just go with it. Or, you know, during thing of the week, I'll just like keep my head very still. Just keep your head still. Don't don't bob to the the music with Improperly. non-existent beats in your head. Just um just go with it. Don't make excuses. No, okay, yeah. 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 Don't don't be ashamed. <laughs> of my poor rhythm. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, cool. So my thing of the week is um video game controllers. So <laughs> We have a lot of different video game controllers. We have mm-hmm. Xbox. We have PlayStation. We have like, Switch. I had a Bluetooth ones. We had the Switch. Um, all sorts of wireless controllers, wired controllers, all of that. And, you know, I'm all about multipurpose. I'm all about reducing. I'm all about like trying to streamline things. So I found these controllers. They are Bluetooth, but you can put them in different modes. You can put them into modes for Windows, for Mac, for Switch. Um, oh, they work and on Android, too? they work on the Switch too. Oh, I didn't know. So um, you know that that lets us replace some of the controllers that we have that we were using. So I could, you know, get rid of a lot of controllers now if we fully switch over to this system. And I'm just trying out which one is best, and you know, I'm using them for travel and everything like that. Because sometimes when we're going over to my family's house or your parents' house, I like bring these controllers over so I can play games with the people who are over at these houses. Um, so. I found one system that I really like. It's the SN30 Pro and the SN30 Pro Plus. Um, so one's like a small and one's like a bigger? Yeah, one is like a <laughs> SNES controller. It's like kind of oh, flat, flat and just mm-hmm. like that little puck type thing. Mm-hmm. And one is kind of more like modern. It has the, the handle grips coming out and stuff yeah. like that. So I just think that it's a really neat system. It charges with USB-C, great battery life, great clickability. The the triggers last, like, you know, the triggers are great. All the buttons are really great. They're really durable. Uh, I'm just really impressed with the system so far. And I just really like that it's a single thing that you can use for all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And I love stuff like that. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty sweet. So yeah. we'll have link, are you going to link to both sizes? I'll link to both sizes just so that people can see the two different versions. Cool. Yeah. Um, my thing of the week is another present I had put on my Christmas wish list and got for Christmas. And it's these LED candles. They're actually the video that we released, um, our patio makeover video. At the end of it, I used them in like the lanterns we we got (laughs) um, just because I didn't want to deal with real candles. (laughs) But so I've been trying to find the perfect LED candle for a really long time, like since they came out. But, you know, it... The ones before, it's like the flame it was just like a flame-shaped little bulb. And even when it flickered, it was just like the light would turn on and off. And they were plasticky. And like they just never, unless you're really far away, they never really quite looked right. 
And then when we were on vacation once, the place we were at had this new type. And they're not really new anymore. They were just new at the time. Um, But so that's what I ended up putting on my list because they're finally not ridiculously expensive. When we discovered Mm. them, they were $80 for a pack of three candles. And now it's like, I don't know, I'll pull up the price. We'll we'll link to them. I think it's like... 20 Whoa. Oh, 16 Whoa, 16, 16 for a set of three. Um, oh, we should get more of those i know i'm going to well, I, I wanted to like test them so they're on amazon the brand is like you were y i w e r flameless candles uh. but here's the two things that make them awesome um and then, or that make them different than like the ones <laughs> evan's adding more to the car right now <laughs> they make them different from the ones before so the flame part is actually it actually physically moves it like flutters so there's there's mechanical movement there's mechanical movement yeah to where like the little thing coming up where the flame would be flutters and there's a light shining on it so like it's so much more realistic like it, it the, takes the a room, double take the room kind of flickers like there's candles in it like and, it should be and you see the quote-unquote flame actually physically moving not just like a bulb shaped like a flame that is flickering off and flickering on with lower and brighter light yeah um so that is super cool and the other thing is they're covered in wax mm-hmm. so like they have the right sheen when you touch them it's like touching a candle like they're just really cool. So the set comes with three different sizes. They're remote controlled. We realize that our TV remote also turns them <laughs> on and off, which is like yeah. kind of convenient. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll link to those. It's my thing of the week. Yeah, but uh, I think that you're right. When we first saw them, we wanted them, but they're too expensive. So but expensive. like, that's really reasonable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so neat. Yeah, sixteen ninety nine for a set of three. Ooh. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's Evan and Caitlin podcast. Um, so far, this is the first time we've taken like a little bit of a break between them. Well, we, I think. we took a break like around the holidays, but this is oh, yeah. the first one since we announced that we were going to do the slightly more reduced yeah. schedule. It's, it's, I think it's good for like our mental stuff. Yeah, it's good for mental stuff. Yeah, and so, I think it hopefully lets us spend a little bit more time thinking about like a, a topic that would be good. Yeah, like a good... Like, um, I don't know. Story like, worthy is, topic, yeah. Yeah, like this is a really fun one to, to talk about. Yeah, so, so appreciate you guys hanging out with us and tuning in to this week's episode, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye.